the vision yeah, you, you were describing of, of Ward 8 as it changes uh, condos and the new retail, it sounds awfully like gentrification, which is something you've been had mixed views of in no, other parts I of the city. I don't have mixed views about gentrification. I have one sided view. Uh, we welcome in and everybody into Ward 8, into the city. But we're not going to tolerate people coming in, pushing out long-term residents who've been there during the good times and the bad times. And so we welcome that. And so what's going to happen in St. Elizabeth East uh, campus is going to have be a mixture of people. We're not displacing anybody. Right, that's open land to be able to yeah, develop. That's right. Pop the point. If there's housing put there, if, it ever, if the mayor ever does something about it, which... Uh, I'm doubtful at this point. Oh, you, uh, that's the second criticism there. you've made of Mayor Gray here. What's wrong with Mayor Gray? Well, well I don't want to discuss Mayor Gray. Well, you've, you I'm, brought him up twice. I'm, well, I'm stating the facts that I have a responsibility to represent the views and values right. of the people in Ward 8 and to take them higher than their values are. And Mayor what, Gray needs people, to do more. That's what people tell me. Okay, Mayor uh, Gray about needs that. to do more. People are very upset about Poplar Point. Uh, it's going to cost about fifty six million dollars to get the transfer. And I'm in demand of Mayor Gray and his administration that that fifty six million dollars be put into the pot so we can get the land transferred and then get it developed. And so what the point I'm making here is that Ward 8 is on the move. What I've said to the five candidates, let's talk about the issues. Don't talk about me. I'm not the issue. Talk about my, his, my, my great per performances since I've been in that office and before that. And what they're going to do to change it? You're certain they are fire. I, I, I know more than any of them know. I know how to get money from the budget that they don't know how to do. I, I know how to legislate and get bills through the council. They say you've been there too long. Well, that's what you. What Natalie you, Williams, what Sandra Seegers, well, Jock Patterson, Daryl Gaston. What do you, what you respect them to say? They don't have any issues because they, they attack me being there. Too well, you're long. the incumbent. Well, well, I don't worry about that. The people of Ward Eight want a positive campaign. They want you to tell people what you have done and what you will do that they can count on you. The people of Ward 8 can depend on Marion Barry to stand up, to fight, to, to deliver resources, and to get something done. Do you, That's the issue do you feel that your ability to get something done for the ward has been hampered by the fact that the mayor uh, has not been able to push forward his agenda because of all the ethical questions, because of all the investigations going on of uh, himself, his staff, and the council? No, it hasn't. The mayor had an economic development summit that was very, very successful. I was there. I, I uh, was supposed to go to a funeral of a good friend of mine in Alabama. I canceled that. We had a follow-up session uh, at the hearing yesterday with Victor Hoskins. I couldn't stay to, for that because I had to go to another meeting. But I indicated with Victor, he and I had a long talk for an hour about how we're going to proceed to develop Ward 8. We've been not distracted because... The day-to-day -day operations of what happens in Ward 8 is Victor Hopkins. And the He's mayor the deputy the, mayor for deputy economic mayor, right. development. And so, no, it's distracted uh, not from Ward 8. Uh, it might have distracted from other city projects. But the highest power that I have for Ward 8 is education. We have 15 elementary schools, have three middle schools, and two high schools, and a in Baloo. And the reading scores at, at, at our elementary schools are in the 40s at the most. We don't have one, one, one school in, in, in Ward 8 that has proficiency over 50%. Uh, and it costs you around 19%. I'm working on increasing that. The Chancellor just announced yesterday that she's going to focus on 40 schools in five years, moving them 40 points. That's an ambitious goal. And it can't happen unless we have the community involved, unless we have Mayor Gray's administration, given the support services, which I'm sure he's going to do. Those are the issues in Ward 8. These are the issues you are talking about. The people are fighting for survival in Ward 8, finding food, money to buy food, to keep their rent. So we've had almost two or 3,000 calls to Jackie Ward about utilities being turned off. That's what we're working on. How do you get them turned on? We're working on, we've had 44,000 evictions. Notices in the district. Well, what is the well? I all of those are the serious issues. I agree with that. But what I think Mark was asking, and I'll try to ask in a different way, is that how can the chairman of the council and the mayor, the two top leaders of the city, focus on those kinds of things, those day-to-day -day life, those survival issues, when they're simply trying to also survive these uh, in criminal investigations of their campaigns? How it, do you do it? Is what happens. The mayor has made education a top priority. I thought it was jobs. 
No, it's not. Kwame Brown has made education the top. He's going to have some announcements rather soon. I made the education of these young people in both charter and public schools the highest priority for me. Uh, I'm going to announce a major program of me being in these schools, try to get my colleagues to be in these schools. And so the policy decisions have not been hampered uh, by any of this. And, and you all try to get us distracted on it. We're not going to get distracted. We're not trying to get you distracted. You, you, you are, too. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not trying to get you addressed. a serious issue.